Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union, the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. Welcome. Here we are, Access to Democracy, Alan Miller, and we have Tom Whaley of the St. Paul Saints with us. Uh, welcome, a first time visitor, but so much to talk about with the Saints. Thanks for As having me. We were just saying before we went on air, the Saints have really turned around Lower Town and really <laughs> revitalized St. Paul in a way uh, that's really amazing. We're, we're a piece to the puzzle. There are, there are a lot of things going on. It was, uh, you know, going back five, six, seven years, it was a, a place we knew we wanted to be. It, it, it uh, you know, isn't, isn't what it is today or wasn't what it is today, but, but you, you could tell that the seeds were, were there for, for a really, you know, to try to be part of a really special place. Well, the Saints are unique, uh, having flowed down from Bill Vec, who was... <laughs> yep. An True. incredible <laughs> entrepreneur, uh, and I think Mike is now the president, his son, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but he's kept some of the uniqueness about the team and uh, some of the innovative things that the team does and some of the things uh, that fans go there not just to see the game, mm -hmm. but really to see the entertainment. I mean, I, I don't know of anybody else who has a pig that brings out the balls <laughs> to the umpire. That's true. And we might be the only one there doing that one, but no, it's it's uh, that's true. I mean, uh, our one of our favorite phrases is it's not brain surgery, so we try to have a have a good time and and realize that we're we're in the entertainment business. We're not we're not there about the sports, and I don't I don't think any sports organization really is when you get down to it. Um, but we embrace that you know the aspect of. Um, you know, of community and celebration, and yeah, we, we want to put a, a great team out on the field and have... And you certainly have we, this year. <laughs> we're doing okay this year. <laughs> um, we we want to do that, and that's one of our, our main missions is to put uh, a great team out there, but, you know, there's all these wonderful things that can happen in the stands, and, you know, baseball is just a great game that way to, to be able to do some of the things we do. Well, what other sports event can you go and get a haircut while you're watching the game? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Or a massage. <laughs> From a nun. <laughs> From a nun. Uh, I mean, these are some of the things that make mm -hmm. the Saints unique. And you have an incredible new stadium. We do. We're, we're really fortunate. CHS Field, um, you know, at, at Midway Stadium, Midway was a, was a wonderful home for a long, a long time. But it was, uh, in terms of its uh, appointments or amenities, wasn't, uh, wasn't all that great. Um, wasn't great shakes, but uh, you know we did our best, and we working with our partners in the city of St. Paul to make that a nice home. But this, um, I would put, you know, I haven't been in all of them, but I'd put CHS Field um, at or maybe, if not at, very near the top of uh, of, of minor league ballparks Absol in the country. <clears throat> Absolutely, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also got a much better location uh, than you had previously. It's accessible to so much. That, 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 was, that was, for us, one of the real reasons to, to get excited about, uh, about Lower Town was the accessibility. At Midway Stadium, everybody knew in town seemed to know where it was, and I think that helped us in the, in the early years when you say you're, you're on Snelling just south of the fairgrounds. Pretty much anyone in the state says, oh, I know where that is. Um, so we were lucky that way, and the state 
high school tournament was held there, so people knew that that ballpark for other things. But um, you're, it, it, there wasn't a whole lot connecting it to the rest of of town. There was uh, there was no transit at all. There was one road in and one road out, um, so it was a little bit limiting that way. Certainly nothing around it um, other than the ballpark. But um, you know you go into to downtown St. Paul and then more specifically into Lower Town, it's just, I don't know, there's 30 or 35 bus routes, the light rail line opened last year, um, you know, lots of amenities, bars, restaurants, hotels. I was going to say there are a lot of restaurants, uh, really unique restaurants that are very, very accessible to the stadium. Yeah, and, and it's, it's been fun. I, I, I tell folks when they say, what's the best thing about the ballpark? I, I love the ballpark. I think it, there, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful park, and there are lots of things I love about it, but the thing that I love about it most is where it sits. <laughs> it's, in a, it's in a really wonderful, fun, vibrant neighborhood, and, and uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a kick in the shorts to, to come to work every day in that neighborhood. And well, you're a recovering attorney, as am I, <laughs> I am. and uh, what you're doing is a lot more fun than, uh, <laughs> than practicing law was. Most days it is, I'd say, <laughs> probably overwhelming majority. I, I, had, uh, I had some really good times practicing law, but, but uh, baseball's a, always been a passion. It's, it's, it's and, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, I grew up in New York on Long Island, and uh, so I became a Yankee fan. My parents and I used to go on Sundays. Mm -hmm to home games there and uh, <clears throat> baseball has always been the sport for me. It's uh, it, it's it, it, same for me. I, my, my earliest memories, I, gr I grew up in St. Louis and I've never, haven't quite quit the Cardinals, although I've been in Minnesota for over 25 years. Um, it, it is, it's in, ingrained in when you're, when you talk to, to a baseball fan, you know, they all have their own story, but there's, there's a wonderful common thread that, that runs through back to, you know, times with your, with your, your parents or your grandparents or an aunt and uncle. And well, it's well, just... I, ha I have to say that <clears throat> I, I have become a homer very much, <laughs> be it twins or be it saints, uh, particularly when we first went to the Metrodome and the Yankees arrived it was like the rich kids coming <laughs> to yeah, beat up on, on the, sa <laughs> the Sandlot right. players. And I switched my allegiance then and there. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and uh, it's been very strong ever since. But now, you, you started out with the Saints a lot of years ago, but you also have experience in Major League Baseball mm -hmm. as well, which I think probably stands you in good stead as a vice president. You're one of the owners. You're mm -hmm. a vice president. Uh, and uh, you are the financial wizard of the, <laughs> of, the of my of my own checkbook. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, it's um, yeah. I, I had I had two really good years with uh, with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays at the time, and uh, I, I I don't you know although I, I I found out during my time there that I was more I have a five minute attention span so I was better suited for. <laughs> minor league baseball you have to wear a, a bunch of different hats but um, I had a, had a really good time and learned a ton in uh, in Tampa Bay and, and, and had a lot of fun um, you know the, the the biggest thing I learned is I, I really love minor league baseball and I love independent baseball it's a, it's a it's a it's a lot of fun there's there's, there's something new every day now the, the team is I think 11 games in front at this point in the division 27 and six <clears throat> But it hasn't always been that way. But Saints fans have always been there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the uniqueness, maybe it's the fact that they are the little guys st striving. Mm -hmm. Now they're the big guy. Uh, <laughs> That's right. But uh, you have a unique mascot. We do. It's it's you know, the, the, to talk about the the team for a second. We've always sort of been uh, when the Northern League was was founded in 1993, which was sort of the the reemergence of independent baseball was uh, the Northern League was a, a throwback to the way baseball had been before the farm system. So, in the you know the farm system came around in the in the 30s, um, 
but uh, the independent ball is a bit of a throwback, and so you uh, it, w it was a little bit of a little bit risky. But that that first year we were in places uh, like uh, Sioux Falls and Sioux City and Thunder Bay and Duluth, and so St. Paul sort of by default ended up being the Yankees of of the Northern League. So we've always sort of worn that mantle in our own in our own league, and and uh, had some fun with it, and and you know had some fun with it in the. In the uh, you know in our, our our time in in independent ball, but but it's you went through a couple of transitions also to the present league. Yeah, we, there was a, a time, you know, and you, any organization or league goes through growing pains. I think in uh, our league, in its second or third generation of owners, started to expand, and we were in places like Calgary and Edmonton, and they were folks talking about a national footprint and whatnot. And, and I think our folks and some of the folks in the original group were really, um, you know, committed to us being a, a regional upper Midwest league. So we did, in I think it was 2005 or six. Um, left the league we helped found and, and started the American Association. Um, fast forward a few years from that, a lot of those teams that were that we were in the Northern League with ended up coming back. So we were fortunate. We have some wonderful rivalries with uh, with teams in Winnipeg and Fargo and Kansas City. You have City three divisions now. Correct. But also uh, having three divisions means that you could stay closer to home, which I mean, in today's transportation costs, that has to be a big consideration, although you do get to play the other teams. Mm -hmm. But again, like, uh, like the major leagues, you concentrate on your division primarily, yeah, and then you win your division, you go into playoffs. You have playoffs. We, our, <laughs> our current setup is uh, three divisions and a wild card. And so we, we, we play that way, and we'll, we'll play the first two weeks of September our playoffs. and. Uh, Knock on my wooden head, we'll 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 be there in it. But yeah, it's I, I think the league's at its best when, you know, we go as far east as Gary, Indiana, um, as far west as Wichita, um, and up to Winnipeg. And and it's 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 the it's that that region of the country, and it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful place to do what we do. At the Upper Midwest is. It's not just taking your players though. It's taking the equipment, it's taking the bats, it's taking the uniforms, <laughs> it's taking the medical personnel, it's taking the management team. Uh, logistically, that's got to be a nightmare. It's, it, it, you, get, you get a system down, everybody has, the, has their system, and uh, you know, fortunately we um, you usually, or we've had good fortune with keeping the same uh, driver. We travel by bus for the most part. And yeah, it's not an easy life for, for those guys. I mean, they were, we played a game uh, late, uh, when, or we played a game Wednesday afternoon. The guys, so the guys did get to uh, sleep in their own beds Wednesday night. But they got up and have to be at the park by seven, seven thirty, so they can get on the bus to go to Fargo, and they'll play four games up there this weekend, and then drive uh, from Fargo down to Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, you know, after a night game in Lincoln, they'll they'll bus back and arrive back at six or seven in the morning to St. Paul, and so it it, it gets to be. It's a grind on them. It's not an easy. Well, that's what everybody says about it. minor leagues as well as yeah. independent leagues. And uh, there's something very special about an independent league, though. I mean, because you're not affiliated with a major league team. Mm -hmm. So you really are much more reliant on yourself and your own innovation uh, and your own ingenuity. It, yeah, yeah, you have to be. And that, that I think the the... The fellows who founded the the Northern League back in '93, it was a it was a special group of guys. They knew the baseball business really well, and many of them owned teams and affiliated ball. But you had had some really good operators in that early group that were that 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 uh, you know took the chance on independent ball because they wanted to. You know, it wasn't a they weren't sort of forced into it. They they ran to it and and thought, let's do this. This sounds like could be great fun. And, and the early years were great because you were sort of writing the rules. And, um, you know, I think, I think back to things that, you know, happened and it seems a little bit like ancient history now. But, you know, the, to realize that, that, the, that the major leagues changed their draft from the amateur draft to the first year player draft because of J.D. Drew having signed with the Saints. You can look <laughs> back on that and go, oh, you had, some, had a little bit of fun and you disrupted the system and made folks think about things. And uh, it, it was a. Uh, mm, Sharon and I saw J.D. Drew play with the Saints mm -hmm. so uh, and you've had other players uh, who have gone to the major leagues also yeah we, we've sent 
in 22 years, we've sent 20 guys uh, have gone from wearing Saints uniforms to, you know, subsequently wearing Major League uniforms. And we're really proud of that. We realize most of the fans that come out may not care so much about the, the baseball. But for us, um, it's a point of great pride, and we take great care in our, in our you know, our player development. And the independent leagues are, 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 are you know, a legitimate source of, of development for the big leagues. And, yeah, let's and it, talk about that because how does an independent, <coughs> independent league develop its players? How do you go about having tryouts? Where do you have quote unquote spring training? Things well, like that. I think the, the spring training is uh, that's an easy one. We, 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 the, by league rule we have two weeks prior to the start of the season and, and you know hopefully most of your your players have, you know, they're, they've been training, you know, either in, in big league camps or working out on their own. We get a lot of our players from the, you know, I guess what could be called the typical baseball hotbeds, you know, Florida, Texas, California. Um, but so that's a, that's a two-week period right prior to the start of the season. But, um, you know, the players are found, it's, it's basically, I would call it a second chance league or a second chance you know independent ball is about a second chance it's it's somebody who's been released maybe somebody who's been injured somebody who was passed over in a draft you know kevin millar who's on uh, uh on the mlb network every every day kevin got his start with us he was passed over in the draft and and played in 1993 with us uh, at the end of the season had his contract purchased with the marlins six years later he's up in the big league club and a few years after that he's a world series champion with the red sox and and there are some wonderful stories that way because i think fans relate to that notion of a second chance and, and that's really i think what the independent leagues yeah, are about starting with little league there are millions <clears throat> of young boys playing baseball actually boys and girls today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and slowly that filters down to hundreds of thousands and then tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. They're not all going to make it right. in the bigs. Right. But they still have the passion. Yep. They still love the sport. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with people who love the sport, which mm -hmm. is the way I feel about it. Mm -hmm. you, My you, entire life, uh, I got a double. And... Uh, that's <laughs> but you remember that, you know, and, and, and that's everybody's that that's the part I, that's the most fun is you, you just you, you and I, you do all over minor league baseball. But I think independent ball, because you're dealing with players that have been told you're not good enough or, you know, or you're hurt or you're damaged goods or whatever. They all all of them have uh, to varying degrees a chip on their shoulder and you have some really fun stories that develop so the you're, you're excited for the players. But. But what's really fun is the, are, are some of the stories behind them, and, and that's that's what keeps us going. There's just there's really some you just meet you meet some some wonderful wonderful guys who happen to play baseball. And you have a unique ownership setup. At least the Saints do. I don't know about the other teams, mm -hmm. but there's you, and there is Vec, Mike mm -hmm. Vec, and there's a fellow by the name of Bill Murray. <laughs> uh, who's been seen i'm told in he, television and he, uh he has a standing invitation a to the couple of movies <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh and, wait, and one, another one of, one of our, our partners uh marv goldklang and marv's marv's been in in uh in uh minor league baseball and independent baseball for i mean he he was running teams and owning teams back before the days of bull durham i mean he i want to say like late 70s all, all these guys go back you know I, say, I used to say 30 years, but it's 40 years now back into the 70s with, with minor league baseball before it was kind of, you know, a thing. It was just a, you know, a nothing thing out there. It was the, well, it's the know, same thing that we're talking about. It's the love and the passion yeah. of the game. Yeah. And uh, very few people have become multi-billionaires uh, running an independent league team mm -hmm. or a minor league team and that goes for those that are affiliated mm -hmm. with the major league team mm -hmm. but you still have exciting games you still have major league scouts who stop in yep. especially with a record like yours right now uh, scouts are saying hey let's let's check some of these guys out uh, let's look at some of these pitchers and see what they've got mm -hmm. <coughs> you, you do I mean uh, we, we do get the, it gets scouted. We're fortunate in the in the t in the Twin Cities here because it's relatively easy to get to. Um, so so uh, you know you can you can get 
to pretty much well, all the major league cities nonstop from here, so that that's an easy trip in and out, and that facilitates our, our players getting looked at. It's one of the reasons why I think um, St. Paul is a place where where, where players want to play, um, because uh, you know we have a good track record. We've we've moved 20 guys to the big leagues. We've moved 120 back into the system, if you were, uh, as you will. But um, uh, it, it's uh, players want to play here. You know our fan support. We've been really fortunate that way. It's it's a lot more fun to play in front of a bunch of people than not a bunch of people. And so there all these reasons add up why why players want to be here. Yeah, and and you have uh, certainly a major league newspaper right mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. uh, which is important. Uh, the Pioneer Press. Mike Burback, who's mm -hmm. a frequent guest here oh, yeah. on this yeah. uh, show. Uh, all of this counts a lot. Now, I read an article recently said for the average family of four to attend a game at Yankee Stadium, they have to be ready to spend between four and seven hundred dollars. <laughs> and you know, I can believe it yeah. uh, with the price of tickets. And uh, I picked the Yankees because everybody sort of Why points not? to it's them, fun. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't hurt them as the <laughs> pinnacle of the big. baseball world. Yeah. What's a family of four have to pay to attend a Saints game? Well, I mean, if you if you go our, our berm seating, uh, you know, which you can get a day of the game is five bucks. So you can go sit out on the berm for five bucks. So you're back twenty bucks there. Um, you know, we've got uh, hot dogs two dollars and fifty cents. You know, as opposed to five fifty. Up to seven dollars for a hot dog. You know, dog. we we will sell you a five dollar and fifty cent hot dog. But the point is, from from an access standpoint, um, you know, the new ballparks allowed us to do more. We've got more bells and whistles that we can make more fun stuff, and and some people like to pay for it. But but what was critical for us in going from Midway Stadium to CHS Field was that we maintain that affordability, and we were we were able to do that. So you can still I mean, you ask the question. I, I would say forty forty five bucks. You know, a family can come out. And, and have a really good time at the game, see some great baseball, you know, be really entertained. Really quality baseball. Yeah. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you attribute your tremendous success so far this year? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's always been a competitive team. It's been a playoff mm -hmm. team. It's been a good team. Mm -hmm. But in your division right now, uh, they've been unique. What is that? Is that... Some new faces, or what is it? I, I think it's I think it's that our manager George Samus <laughs> works really hard every year to put a put a good team together. I, th I think one of the things that that happened um, this year was uh, there was there was no question that the the other teams in our league used our facility against us in terms of of. Uh, you know, when they were marketing their players, they you know they'd say, "Oh, you don't want to spend your whole summer in St. Paul." You know what the what the clubhouse and the training situation, all of that, is there. And I think a lot of guys, particularly the ones more experienced ones that were maybe had played a lot in Double and Triple A, and those are those are the guys that 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 tend to push push you to success. Uh, a lot of them, I, actually, not all of them. We we had some great players over the years because of our you know, our reputation for for moving guys through and and winning. But I think um, it was successful in some, some cases where they'd say, ah, oh, yeah, I don't want to spend my, my summer in that clubhouse in St. Paul, whereas now, uh, you know, we've probably got, uh, you know, it's a state-of-the-art facility. It's, yeah. there, there's not a finer place to play minor league ball in the country than, than St. Paul. So um, that, that bit's been, been taken away and, and I think helped us. So what you see on our roster now is we've got, Guys that are, you know, with 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 good double and triple A experience, and in some cases, uh, major league experience, that are saying, "Yeah, I'll, I'll go to St. Paul and play." That's really helped. And uh, I, I will be aging myself, but uh, uh, my parents moved to Minneapolis. Uh, we were here for a couple of years when I was in college, and it was the Minneapolis Millers mm -hmm. and the St. Paul Saints. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> how far we have come yep <laughs> it's it was uh that was a that was quite a rivalry and when you read up on it um boy the the uh the two communities had a lot of fun around their their baseball teams and uh you know it's kind of neat today it's not necessarily the rivalry anymore between two teams that played each other all the time um but uh pretty sure this market's the only market in the country where all our major sports 
buildings are on are connected, uh, you know, by a rail line or, or transit. It's We're really, very fortunate now, with yeah. the, especially with the green line now going in, mm -hmm. and we can get on at Fort Snelling mm -hmm. in the blue line and transfer to the green line and, and be there. Uh, yep. And if it's off-peak time, which it generally is, mm -hmm. uh, you can be there inexpensively. Yeah, and, and it's it's been. I, I did it last week. I took the. It's the only way I go anymore over to Target Field. I to see the Twins. I I jump on the train. It's a, it's a really easy way to get over there. And I think, um, you know, we're still gathering information, but I think a lot of folks are are taking the train. And as as time goes on, more will um, to 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 come see us. So well, the parking near. Your stadium is not as expensive as it is near Target Field, but uh, that stands to reason just based mm -hmm. on independent league as opposed to major league. Yeah, it's <coughs> it's uh it's it's real affordable. I mean, most of the the lots and the ramps around you're talking you know five, six, seven, eight bucks to to park. It's not a not a, not too burdensome. Now you have some unique promos during the year promotions. What do you have coming up? Here we are, at the end of <laughs> June. And uh, we still have a whole season ahead of us, July, August, and we into, do. The, into the uh, end of the season. <laughs> I'm trying to think now as we go. I should I should have memorized my promotional schedule before I came over. But um, yeah, it, uh, well, it's available online. It is available online, so folks can go. But no, it's it's uh, each each night when you come out to the ballpark is is a different theme. You know, each 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 week ha each day of the week has a theme. And then each night has its own special theme. So it's uh, I, there's not a not a game on the schedule where we're just doing baseball. You're 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 out there and and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna do something something crazy. Hopefully give you something to talk about around the water cooler and smile and have fun. Uh, same with your family. How do the umpires react to getting uh, baseballs from a pig? <laughs> Most of them are really good sports about it. Pablo Pigasso. Pablo Pigasso this year, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've had uh, we've had some fun. That's one of our favorite days uh, in the office. Is the the date we collect all the uh, we do a name the pig contest every year, and uh, we collect the names of that folks send in to us. And and man, the stuff folks come up with is is hilarious. So we we have a good time that day and going through. But Pablo Picasso, uh, given our proximity to an arts community and and how important arts been to us through the years, uh, seemed seemed fitting. <laughs> And uh, fitting it is. How do you train the pigs? We have a we have a trainer. Um, Dennis Houth runs a, as a as a farmer over in Western Wisconsin. And f since uh, since the very first uh, mascot, the Saint, in 1993, uh, Dennis trains them and uh, uh, over there and and starts them at a re you know pretty much from birth with training. And and by now uh, I think. I think Pablo's a couple of months old now. They really start to get the routine. They're they're very intelligent animals. They, yeah. They're they're smarter yeah. than dogs, yeah. and so you you can train them and have some fun with them. And uh, we've got little tricks, hopefully, that nobody sees between the umpire and the dugout and whatnot that we uh, that we utilize so uh, uh, to get Pablo to cart the balls out to the ump. <laughs> we've been talking with Tom Whaley of the St. Paul Saints. Uh, first time here. But hope you come back, uh, certainly before the end of the season. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, any final thoughts to the fans? No, just come out and see us. It's, uh, we're, we're having a lot of fun out there. We have a, a concert tomorrow. We'll have some concerts throughout the, the summer. So come out and experience the ballpark, whether it's a Saints game or an amateur game concert. Uh, just come out and see the place and visit the neighborhood. It's wonderful. Tom, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Alan.